Thank you very much. And how awesome is this? So uh, thank you so much for letting me join you. Um, I find it sometimes a little bit difficult to talk on the spot, um, which might be a surprise for some people. So I thought I'd write something and I would share it with you all today in true drama teacher style. I apologize. So here we go. Year six, top of the school. It meant only one thing. At long last, I could compete to become projector monitor. The power to sit at the front of the school, plastic sheet in hand, carefully following along to Jubilate or the Lord's my shepherd, moving the sheet further along the overhead projector, I've made it. It's those moments of our school journey that we remember the most. See, I can't recall what I learned in year eight, aside from the food lesson on French toast, but I do remember the opportunities that I got given to grow. Those chances to be able to show that I'm more than just a body in a room, a number on a league table, or that kid who played Susan Boyle during a school show. See, now I know that as educators, we have a secret power. No, we can't fly or shoot webs from our hands, but what we have is the power to empower. Now, we all know that we sometimes like to overcomplicate, take a simple method and turn it complex. Like a Rubik's cube, we get sucked into a vortex, but instead we just need to sit back to reflect. Or if we don't do that, we play too safe. Need a volunteer for a school tour? We'll make sure it's the same kid who's done it a hundred times already before. Because we know they'll be mature. They'll turn up in polished shoes, biggest grin. Yet that one kid who you're not sure on never gets picked. Always second place. So why on earth would they go to aim for first if we don't give them some power and belief and a chance to feel empowered and most importantly, achieve? In history, we know a simple action by one person can cause a chain reaction, a spiral from which ideas can change, can grow. Let us classrooms and schools and forms be where history is made and positively changed, a place where every student is given an opportunity to stand centre stage. Students' voice is more than just a student council, sports teams or tour guides. And of course, these foundations are important, but challenge yourself to look beyond the foundations. It's the responsibilities you give in your classroom for a student to be a leader. It's the moments you take a risk and let that student on the verge of exclusion have a chance to represent. It's using your power to empower. One of my favorite movie quotes is, life is like a box of chocolates. And I think what they actually meant to say is, student voice is like a box of chocolates. Nobody wants to open that box and see everything the same. When we get a box of chocolates, we want to see variety, difference, but also potentially something new. Now, of course, you have your stable milk chocolates, which is your student council. And those are usually the ones that go first because we know they are a good and safe option. You can't really get it wrong. But those are not the ones we remember in the end. The ones that stand out are usually the ones we didn't like and also the ones we loved. But to get to that final decision point, we have to finish the box, which is not always easy and can take us time. To know truly the student voice techniques that work for us, we have to offer diversity in our approach because we work with humans, not robots. We can't simply pick one approach and ignore the rest for ease, put up our feet and concede. We must explore what we do well and challenge where we can improve. Reflect on the image we present and think if our school was this box of chocolates, would we open up and regret what we brought or feast on the variety that we see? Offer not just a variety of options, but also consider the platforms. Stick me in the middle of a football field and I'd run, but I'd have no clue on what I actually needed to do, but put a script in my hand and I'll don a wig and wick a costume out of my bag. Are the options for both students and staff to be heard all on one platform? Do you only offer the opportunities that require someone vocal or loud? For me, as a teen, I could talk, but I'd never speak out about equality and diversity because I wasn't ready to accept me. And that opportunity didn't come in my teens. It did come in a secondary school, but I was age 21 and doing my PGCE. As a teacher, I was given the right environment and platform to feel empowered, to speak out and accept me. But now I question, what if that had happened in my teens? What if teachers had created some opportunities and forms in which I could be heard and seen, a chance to perhaps feel free, discuss my sexuality, a safe space that I needed age 13 so I could breathe and just be me? My voice was crushed and silenced, not given an opportunity to be freed. What if I'd used their, what if they'd used their power to empower? And although the question is one I still think about now, the answer is not to contemplate, sit and think is to be that change that I needed so desperately. The take home point of this five minute rant is, don't accept that one approach is enough. Open as many boxes of chocolates as you can and sample all the chocolates on offer. Find the ones that work for you and share it with those around you. But never forget, 
Your everyday actions and everyday choices you make in your classroom have the power to empower. Be a superhero, be an educator. Thank you.